Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about Python and how it is compiled. Um, but you know, you might you might not think about it that way. Uh, but I'm going to show you both um, that it is compiled and an example of how the execution actually works in Python. Uh, so let's jump into it. Okay, so for today, um, I'm going to show you just a very very basic Python module with a very very basic function in it. Uh, and then we're going to run the Python compiler and then show how that gets interpreted. Uh, so let's start with a little script here. And I'm just going to make a very simple function in here, which sets a variable. Uh, thing equals world and then print hello, hello plus thing. Uh, now, I've intentionally set this as a variable so that I can demonstrate this better when we actually run this. Um, but you know, this is very, very simple. Uh, we'll also call this down here just to show that it, it runs and works. And so if we run Python 3 t.py, uh, you'll see it prints this out. Now you might think this is, uh, <laughs> oops, there's a version I left over from four. You might think this is interpreted, uh, but it actually goes through a compilation step before it runs this code. And this compilation step is a little bit more obvious if you actually import this module. Um, Python doesn't bother to uh, you know, pre-compile the stuff that's on the command line because uh, you know it assumes that you're only going to run that script once, or it might be an extensionless script and wouldn't really know where to put the, the compiled file. Um, but if you import it, so we do python3-c import t, and again, like this has the side effect of running this, and I would probably, you know, if we were doing a proper executable, put this indented so that importing it doesn't actually run the code here. Uh, but you'll notice after I imported it, uh, I get this weird PyCache directory. And if you're in Python 2, you'll go to .pyc file. And uh, inside this PyCache directory, there is a file here, and it's the module name. Uh, there's a identifier marker for whatever implementation you're using. In this case, I'm using CPython 3.8. And it is a .pyc file. And so this is a, um, in fact, I think if we call file on it, PyCache t. Uh, it says data. Anyway, this is a uh, compiled Python file. And what is contained in here is the bytecode that Python runs. And so when I talk about bytecode, the way Python works is it takes your source, it compiles it into a lower level virtual machine like, you know, assembly like language. Uh, and then at runtime, Python spins a virtual machine and uh, operates on those opcodes. Now, granted, uh, referring to it as an interpreted language is still pretty accurate it, because most of those opcodes are like, you know, grab grab attribute from dictionary based on string, call attribute from from string, um, and so it's it's not actually you know typed as you would think of when you're talking about compiling. Uh, but let's look at how this actually works, and we can do this with the dis module. Uh, I think you can pass a file name to it. Python three. Yes, so here's an example of the bytecode for uh, you know, this entire module here. There's actually two parts to this. The first is the actual module itself. So you can see here, uh, it's doing some stuff to build that actual function, which is this function here. And then we're mostly gonna be uh, interested in the function code for today. Uh, and I'm gonna show you how this, this bytecode works. Now note, I'm using the dis module. This is the disassembly module and let me actually open up the docs for this. Um, so if I Google search Python 3 dis and we click into this here, <laughs> we click into dis here, um, the dis module allows you to decode a bunch of different types in Python. Um, so like functions, list comprehensions, uh, generators, etc., um, and modules. And anyway, there's a whole bunch of functions in here, but at the bottom it also explains all of the different opcodes. Um, I'll let you read through those, but I'm actually going to show you how these particular opcodes work with a little bit of a drawing. So let's take this and we're going to draw how this function executes. Um, so I've opened up paint here and we're going to put that uh, those opcodes here just so that I can reference them. Um, yeah, we're going to run out of space. Uh, well, it's fine. So Python is a stack based language and uh, or a, a stack-based interpreted virtual machine. And this is very common in a lot of virtual machines. Like the, I think the JVM is actually implemented the same way. And a lot of other interpreted languages are also implemented this way. 
um, in that they, you know, when you're in a, a scope, you build up a stack and tear off of it based on the opcodes that run. So we're going to simulate our stack, and this, this kind of rectangle here will be kind of our stop of our stack, and I'm going to have it grow right to left just so it's going to be easier to copy and paste. Um, and we'll show how this function actually executes, and we'll store, you know, locals and printed output over here. Uh, all right, so the first thing that we're doing is we're doing load const uh, world. So what that is going to do is that's going to, let's copy our stack. I'm just going to show you kind of like how this progresses. So you can imagine like each of these stack blocks here are, you know, adding a particular, particular stack entry in here. So this would be, we load the constant world. So that puts world onto our stack. Oh no. There we go. And so that's that's what this first opcode does. The next one does store fast. So what this does is it pops one item and stores it into a variable. So then our stack becomes, you know, empty again. We've popped world and we have set a local variable. So this you can imagine being our locals up here. We have set thing to world. Cool. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is load global print. So if we again copy our stack, and imagine that we have added, I'm actually put this on transparent so I don't have to make that mistake later. So we're gonna load the global print and so that's going to look this name up in the globals mapping and um, put that onto our stack. So now we have a function sitting on our stack. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is load const hello hello. So that is going to, you know, imagine this, this stack growing, well, that was weird. <laughs> that's not what I expected, I guess that makes sense. Um, and we're going to add another stack entry here. And this contains the string hello, hello with a space on it. Hello, hello, space. Uh, then we're going to do load fast on things. So that's going to load the local uh, variable thing that's sitting here. We're going to put that on the stack. So you can imagine this gets copied again. Um, sure, we'll put it down here. Oh, you can see that. Perfect. Uh, and so we put the string world onto our stack here. Uh, next, we run the binary add function. So what this does is, is it's going to pop two items, add them together, and then put them back on the stack. Um, so if we were to take, actually we'll copy this one since that's what it's going to end up looking like afterwards. So it takes hello, hello, and world, sticks them together, and then puts them on the end of our stack. So you can imagine this here, and if we put the string, we now have hello, hello, uh, space world on our stack here. So that's that's what's been put back here after the binary add. Finally, we call uh, we, we call call function one. This is the number of arguments. So it's going to pop one argument off the stack and then call the function here and then and then um, put the return value back of that function here. So print actually returns none and you can kind of see this from three print hello. Um, and we'll call the representation of the return value. You can see that it returns none here. Um, and so, oops, that is not paint. Here we go. And so when we call print here, you know, we will now get this printed output. So you can say printed, and we'll print uh, hello, hello world as a side effect of running the print function. And then after this function returns, we are left with none on our stack. If we copy our empty stack again, uh, to here, but now we have none on here after we've called print. Uh, none. Oops. Move you. There we go. Uh, then we call pop top, which is just going to remove an item from the stack. <laughs> We're going to run out of room here. <laughs> Dang it. Uh, we call pop top, which removes none. Uh, we ignored the return value in our original function. We just called print and we didn't assign it to anything, so it's you know, we called the function and then we ignored the return value. And then finally we get this kind of weird thing, load const none return value. Uh, and that is because all functions in Python implicitly return none at the end. So you can imagine this function being the same as return none at the end uh, because it, it didn't do anything. So the last thing that it does is it loads none back onto the stack. And so even though it just popped none, it doesn't it doesn't know that that would be a shortcut because you know the function it's calling could do arbitrary code, and could return whatever it wants. Uh, but anyway, we load const none, we put that back on the stack, and then finally we call return value and our function is done. Uh, and it returns this one value that is sitting on that execution stack.
is that's kind of how this works and kind of like how you can use the disassembler to see what's going on under the hood. Uh, note that the disassembler will often show you some interesting implementation details of Python. So if we import dis and we make a function, uh, you'll note that when I made the f function, I made a variable and then I added it. Interestingly, if we do hello, hello, plus world, if we do this in line like this, uh, we actually get to see one of the optimizations of Python, which is that, uh, oops, I forgot to put a space here, uh, which is that concatenated strings with the plus operator are, I believe it's called peephole optimized, where uh, during part of the compilation of Python, these two strings are noticed like, oh, we're adding a string literal to a string literal. We can just treat that as one single string literal. And so when you get the load const here, you don't even see this binary out at all because it's been elided. Um, and so you, you just have this, um, you just have this join string automatically, uh, which is kind of cool. But anyway, that's the disassembler. That's the stack-based uh, virtual machine that Python runs, as well as what PyC files are. Um, and hopefully you're convinced now that Python is compiled. <laughs> it doesn't mean that Python's fast, but it does mean that it's compiled. Now note, uh, this is C Python details. Um, a similar thing happens in PyPy, but it has a just-in-time compiler, which will actually turn your runtime code eventually into machine code um, as it runs and realizes hot parts and, and stuff like that. But um, they still use the PyC format as well in, in uh, PyPy, but... Um, there's more magical stuff that happens after it. But anyway, hopefully this was interesting. If you have additional things you want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.